my first thoughts are that I will probably like the negative scan better on screen because it's just, it's quicker and you're going straight to that. The resolution's better, everything's better. So I'm gonna scan this negative, show you how I do that, and then I'll put them up and, and just compare them. Hello again, this film is gonna be about scanning. Uh, the question came up, you know, why would you, why would you scan a negative um, versus print it in the darkroom? Uh, specifically a black and white negative, you know, why would you, why would you print it optically versus scanning? And I think it's very uh, personal, like you, you may not have a darkroom, you may want a darkroom, uh, you may just enjoy scanning the film. There, there are lots of different reasons, but I thought I would break it down from my perspective and why I would scan a negative over print it in the darkroom is if there are some defects in the negative, uh, particularly that I, I just can't, I can't fix, you know, if there's scratches in the negative, that's something that's very, very easy to fix digitally. Um, another, you know, if it's just really, really complicated and I can't, I can't get the print out to, to what I want, but it's still a really, really cool picture. One thing that I have found very frustrating as a, a printer is you end up, so you get these really, really beautiful black and white prints and it's pretty difficult to show them digitally. Like difficult as in, I have yet to make a scan of a print in any way that, that really resembles what the print looks like in person. And I think it's just, a, um, it's just something that's very difficult to do. Now I might not be the best at doing that, but it's always been a frustration for me that, you know, how do, you, how do I share this work other than people, you know, seeing it? Um, and that's where I think that scanning negatives really, really, really has a huge advantage over printing in the darkroom because there's so many like slight tones and variances that, that nuances that you can see in a darkroom print that just don't come across on a screen scanned. The best way that I've found to do it is to actually duplicate it with a digital camera. I haven't, I haven't had a scan. Um, I use a Epson V850 and if I just flatbed scan it and I bought all the calibration targets and everything and I have, I just don't think they look good at all um, as far as my print scan. Plus you can only scan, I think I can only do like an 8x10 so if I print something specifically bigger that becomes like problematic immediately. Um, so the best way I have found to duplicate darkroom prints is with either a copy stand um, or just using a tripod and, and leveling everything off and actually taking it with a digital camera and using something like an X-Rite, you know, target to make sure that, that everything is color accurate. So I do have a negative that I wanna scan, so I will take you through the process of how I scan my film. This is a large format, a four by five negative. And I've wanted to scan this negative for a while because I did a, a darker print and I have it here it's, it's all framed up. So this is a picture that I made with a Cinar view camera. And this has gotta be eight years ago now, at least, cause I, I no longer have the camera. And this was printed on Ilford warm tone paper and I believe lightly selenium tone. I don't have a printing map or anything for it, but I've wanted to scan the negative to just, you know, see what I can do with the negative digitally. Um, and then kind of compare, you know, com compare the results. My first thoughts are that I, I will probably like the negative scan better on screen digitally, but I will probably like this print in person better than anything that I could print out of a printer. And I even have a pretty nice um, Epson sure color printer and it does a really good job. It has an advanced black and white mode that does a decent job. I've used the quad tone printer um, rip with it. I have yet to do anything with an inkjet print that can match, I feel personally that can match um, a darker print. That being said, I find the matte papers coming off like the Epson printers just really, really amazing. 
they have their own beauty to them that I feel rivals a darkroom print just in an entirely different way. They just look different. I still am not a fan of any of the luster or any of the, um, you know, Barda coated inkjet papers. Personally, I just, I don't like them. If I print inkjet black and white, it's usually on like a, a nice cotton rag matte paper and they look really beautiful. So enough of a rant about printing. Let's get back to scanning. So I'm going to scan this negative, show you how I do that, and then I'll put them up and, and just compare them. But like I said, each does have some pros and cons and you know why you do one over the other is you know like i said i if if i want to just share something out or if, if i want to make something nice you know for you know digitally i would go to scanning first because it's just it's quicker and you're going straight to that the resolution's better everything's better um but it it's they're just two different processes so all that being said, let's jump into this and I'll show you how I scan my negatives because that was another question that um, had come, come up. And like I said, I use an Epson V850 and I use the better scanning wet mount. And I had never really done much scanning up until recently. And I was scared to do the, like the wet mount scanning out because specifically because i'm like well what what happens to this negative i'm gonna have to I might have to rewash the negative and clean it and not the case at all like the mounting fluid is it must be highly alcohol or it, it evaporates so quickly and it actually leaves the negatives in some instances cleaner than when i started so it's actually not not a bad thing if you do um, optically print and scan like it, it works out pretty good and i i do like the better scanning fluid mount um, system so I would definitely check that out too all right so the first thing I'm gonna do here is take the actual glass out and then there's a mask and this is for um, medium format and I'm gonna use the 4x5 mask but I'm gonna take this out and give this a good clean this is an anti-static uh, glass cleaner These are just some lint-free cloths. And then what I do is I always scan it emulsion side to the glass. Just because when I did the resolution test, that's how I, I put the test target down. So then what you do is you use this, this is Aztec uh, scanner mounting fluid. It's in this little squirt bottle. So I'm just gonna take that and I tend to use a lot. Um, usually I'll gushing out the sides. I'm gonna put that down there. And I'm gonna put some fluid on the top. And then I'm gonna put a piece of mylar, a mylar sheet down over the top of that. Just gonna roll it out to get the bubbles out. I said I used a little too much fluid, but I find it, it ensures that I don't uh, get any bubbles in there. Now the little holder in here is, oops, is pretty cool because it's got these little um, adjustments where you can go through and raise the height of it to get the just the, the best height um, you can for resolution wise. Wise. And I have a, a little resolution target that you put on the glass and then you go through and make sure that the height that you're using is the sharpest for you. So then this we flip down. So that the negative is actually on the underside. So we're doing a pre-scan of the negative. Um, this is in Silverfast 8 uh, AI Studio. So I don't have much to compare it with. This is the only scanning software I have used. Uh, but in here, so you want to just adjust these red borders so that it is around your, the area that you want to scan. And then the thing that I like about this is it has an actual um, Kodak 
And this was Kodak T-Max 100. Um, I, like I said, I shot this quite a while ago. I haven't shot Kodak T-Max in, in a bit, but according to this scan, it, it looks a little bit, I'm gonna brighten it up a little bit. Um, the sun was just dropping when I was shooting this, so the shadows did get underexposed um, a little bit, but it, it looks pretty good. Don't want to do too much in here. It looks like there's a little bit of blown out there. I think that's about where I'll leave it. Um, now, I pretty much scan everything at max. Um, I just, I figure if I ever want to do anything with it, I can always downsize it um, if I need to. So, but if I ever want to print it, I'm going to want the best resolution I can. So, I'm going to go ahead and hit scan. And now that's gonna scan this into a folder. So here's a little tip. I use this scan imports folder and I have that, if you use Lightroom, here's a tip for you. I have it set up so that if you go to um, file, auto import, and you click this enable auto import, and then you can click on these auto import settings. And this is the folder that I have Silverfast going to. So. Any, any images basically that get dropped in this folder right here. So any images that get dropped into this folder that's here gets automatically put into um, a folder called needs sorting and that's right here. So I know that these need to be um, looked at and taken care of. So it's just a really easy way to um, automatically import your scans into Lightroom if if you haven't if you didn't know about this now you do so again it's under file uh, auto import so we'll just take and wait for that scan to get over here and then we'll take a look at it all right so now the image is finishing it says it's finished so I can go over to Lightroom and see it dropped and it automatically imported it's building a one-to-one -one preview and it, it dropped it right in here for me so i'm going to click on that and oh my goodness did i get some dust in there wow so you should really do a better job of cleaning the negative before you scan but we'll just keep a we'll kind of look in here So the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and uh, make a few slight adjustments. I'm going to turn it to black and white since I did scan it in color. And then I might just bring the shadows up just a tad and maybe the blacks down just a little bit. And I don't want to do too much else in Lightroom. So now I'm gonna go ahead and open it up in Photoshop. And the one huge, huge, huge advantage to um, scanning negatives versus printing them is, now I was kind of sloppy when I scanned it, so there's quite a bit of dust, and I'm gonna go through and clean that up, but I'll speed it up. But it is so much easier to deal with that dust than it is in the darkroom. So that is huge, and then anything that would be like, you know, if I wanted to remove something or, you know, what, whatever you want to do is, is going to be so much easier, easier digitally. And sometimes what I will do if, if I really have a vision for a particular image is I will actually scan it, do the manipulations, and then you can always, and I, I do it sometimes, is output it to transparency and then contact print it back on darkroom paper. And I do it with lift prints quite a bit. Um, and occasionally I will with, with um, a black and white film. Um, but, so yeah, let me go ahead and, and clean up this film and then we'll make some little contrast tweaks. I don't wanna, I don't wanna go through and, and like edit this too much. I just wanted to do a quick like comparison. You know, I printed that picture on the, on that uh, fiber-based paper just years ago. So I'm sure I could do a better job printing it today but I wanna go through, do a little edit on this and then just throw them up next to each other to kind of 
see. And I'm not looking at the other one either. So I'm gonna just go ahead and, and kind of take my vision um, for this one and, and do some quick tweaks to it. And then we'll, we'll put them up next to each other and, and, and kind of compare and see what happens. So, so I'm gonna speed this up, go through and uh, get all this stuff cleaned up. All right, I should have probably just rescanned that. That was way too much <laughs> dust. But again, at least digitally, you can do it pretty, pretty easily and fast. Um, so it looks like my horizon might be a little bit off too. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and crop this. Um, and I believe there's a yeah, straighten. So I go along this horizon here. gonna bring this in and that's one thing I've never been very good at is just the first thing you should do with a, a view camera is level it I'm better at it now but I remember back then I had my horizons would all be all wonky all right so that should be sufficient there we go Okay, so now I'm gonna open this up in, I, I duplicated the layer, I'm gonna open this up in Camera Raw, add a little gradient on the top, because like I said, I'm not trying to match this, I'm trying to just go with what I would typically do for a you know, black and white scan. Um, we'll go gradient. And you kind of want to build this stuff up small. You don't want to. You don't want to do everything in one swoop. Flatten that. Now we'll put a curves on here. A little bit of an S curve. I must have messed something up because I typically this is in 8 bits per channel so I usually do everything in, in 16 bit uh, and it's still in color too but we'll deal with it we'll just let it ride all right so that looks pretty good and then I'm gonna do another curves layer just to bring the highlights down up there just a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and mask that one off. And I like to use the flow. So I'm gonna go 5% flow, 100% opacity and just kind of brush down these highlights just a little bit. Another curves layer. Bring up the shadows just a little. And I'm gonna kind of do this selectively, so.
Alright, that looks good. Oh, we're getting pretty close. Go with one more. It's gonna merge these down into one, and we'll go filter, camera raw, back to the gradient. One more drama out of the sky. So bring the exposure down. Highlights up mm, a tad, blacks down. There we go. And I'm gonna back that off a little, that was a little much. So that's before, I think, <laughs> yeah, I think that's where I started, and that's after. And then I'm just going to go ahead and throw out all the color information. I don't know what I did with this scan, but we're just going to go grayscale, and we'll go ahead and flatten it. Discard. There we go. That's looking bad. I thought it looked kind of blue. So, you know, and I could do a little bit more dodging and burning, but I like the contrast. I think, I think everything looks pretty good without going overboard. So the next thing I'm going to do, I know I have the other one set on, because I had posted it to Instagram the other day, and I know I have it on a white border. So I'm going to do the same thing to this one. And I'm just looking at the name of this file. This is not Pfeiffer Beach. <laughs> this is in Sturgeon Bay. Um, so, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll compare the two and just see what happens. You know, I don't, I'm not expecting miracles. I think this looks really good right now. And it, in my memory, it looks just like the one I printed in the darkroom. So let's find out. All right, so here are the final ones that I did. And I'm actually a little shocked that the, um, the darker imprint, here, let me, Ooh, how do I do this? The darker imprint actually ended up, ha the darker imprint's the one on the right and the scan is the one on the left. And like I said, I'm, I could have spent a lot more time on the scanned one. Um, and I'm sure I spent a lot more time on the one that was in the dark room. But again, I'm not trying to do a, a comparison of which is better. I think they both have their, their strengths and uh, honestly scanning has a lot more strengths than weaknesses as far as um, darkroom work but again I, I always come back to I really love uh, a nice fiber-based darkroom print but I'm really kind of surprised I thought I would have more contrast in the scanned one than the one that was a, a photo but now, you know, if I look at, if I actually look at this, it, this has a little less contrast and it's not cropped quite the same. I, I, it looks like I cropped in. I don't know if that's when I put it to Instagram, but the one on the right, it, it looks like it has a little more contrast than what the print has. But that being said, I, I'm happy with how it looks, especially since it, it is a reproduction of an, an actual print and that's not easy to do. So I'm kind of uh, up in there. I, and I, I'm shocked that the this, this sky in this one is, is more dramatic too, because I, I always thought anyway that with digital scanning and digital um, techniques that I tend to overdo things. And it looks like I overdid it more in the darkroom, really. But anyway, uh, so that is that is what those look like. Um, you know, tell me what you think. I, I see some of the most amazing work that people do just shooting film and scanning it. Um, I, I I love both. So yeah. Well, I hope you found that interesting. I know I learned a few things. Um, it, it was cool to be able to compare a negative that I 
printed in the darkroom and then scanned and, and messed around with a little bit. Uh, the one thing I would say is the one thing I use scanning for probably more than anything, I do a lot of negative scanning to make inkjet dodge masks. Um, and that's an actual mask that you can place over the film. You print it out on transparency. So you can do really intricate dodging and burning in the darkroom. Um, so that's one thing that I love scanning film for. It's a little bit more of a um, advanced technique, but maybe I'll uh, try and try and cover it in future videos. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe, hit the uh, like button, and uh, we'll see you next time.